The material that you're about to listen to and engage with came from our 2017 Missiology Lectures when myself, along with my colleague Johnny Ramirez Johnson, said we need to do this next 2017 Missiology Lectures on this topic of race theology and mission. And we invited Dr. Love Seacrest to engage with us in that process. We wanted to explore the challenging questions regarding racism and ethnocentrism and xenophobia and all of those issues from the perspective of world Christianity with regard to how these realities have existed in many parts of the world and also as part of the colonial mission endeavors. It is fascinating to think that the realities we were talking about are not the experiences of one individual or even one society. We're talking about whiteness as a way of defining the world. And the conference and the conference presenters address time and again this epistemology, this way of making meaning. It has also been described as colonization and post-colonization. The question is not, it's not about guilt, it's about engagement. It's about what are we going to do with what we have inherited. Uh, so the fact that we're having the conversation should not point a finger at you as a listener or viewer. But these are hard conversations. Um, the conversation about race is one that has been deferred for so long and so often, over and over again, as soon as we get close to having a meaningful conversation about race, um, we recoil from the pain of it. And so in our lectures, there are you'll see some of that pain emerge. You'll see some people who have long experienced racism uh, express and, de and declare and name experiences that they um, have had that have been deeply formative, deformative even. So this conversation is not a pretty one, but we're having it. As observers, as uh, listeners, you will be engaging, and we invite you to invite the Holy Spirit. The three of us pray a lot about this series. Mm -hmm. We humbly submitted to God and pleaded for God's mercy to lead us. We are feeble and combined. We are imperfect, and we have prayed that the Lord will fill the gaps and the conversation is only a starter. It is in your hands. It is in your community. It is in your family. And most importantly, it is on your knees. Mm. Whenever we have conversations about race, I always worry. I worry if Asian Americans will really be part of the conversation. If Asian Americans will actually be seen. Now, Asian Americans, I believe, are the litmus test for diversity because what does it mean? What is the term Asian American? What do Asian Americans share? Do we share phenotypes, right? Are we all yellow? Actually, we're actually not, right? We have brown Asian Americans. Do we share cultural backgrounds? What do we share? Do we share language? There's actually nothing particular that we share except we come from Asia, but as you know, Asia is a big place. So with that in mind, and, and because if you understand Asian American diversity, you will be able to see particular Asian Americans. And the ability to see is connected to the ability to love. If you don't see me, you can't love me. If I am something close to Chinese, even though I'm Korean American, and you only have categories for Chinese, and you don't see who I am, then you cannot love me either. So what I want to do is compliment Dr. Tran's um, and, uh, comments by 
thinking about um, thinking about the complexities of Asian American identity, right? Um, I would like to offer two comments regarding the ethics of Asian Americans giving up their spots at Harvard or setting aside honorary white privilege for the sake of the kingdom, and one comment about remembering history. So the first comment. Um, the first comment is the problem of ethnic monopolizing. This actually occurs often in Asian American context, and basically what it means is that one or more ethnic groups taking up the term, taking over the term, the, the racial category. So we can actually talk about Asian American, but the whole thing can be uh, taken over by Chinese Americans. And that's exactly what happens in this affirmative action case with Harvard and Ivy League schools as, as well. Um, the suit was brought up by Asian American Coalition for Education. It was actually made up of 100 organizations, most of which were Chinese American. Right. Now, the surveys, if you survey Asian Americans, 60 to 70% of Asian Americans support affirmative action. But if you look at the media, and if you think about uh, particular narratives of Asian Americans, you might think that this is what Asian Americans believe, that all of us are against affirmative action. And because this lawsuit got a lot of publicity, that's not the case. Because a lot of Asian Americans believe in affirmative action because it actually helps a lot of Asian Americans. And um, I want to kind of flesh out what we mean by modern minority because, you know, Jonathan Tran, uh, Dr. Tran mentioned that, but it's the fact that there are many Asian Americans who are below the poverty line, who actually are not educated. For example, Cambodian Americans struggle to graduate from high school. But do they get support? No. Why? Because they're Asian Americans. They're not really people of color who actually need support. So what does that mean? When we have a narrative in our minds that Asian Americans are against affirmative action, this is the biggest struggle, and we ignore certain demographics. One of the biggest struggles of Asian Americans is when an Asian American person represents something, but you are not included. Right, so sometimes Asian American will speak, and then Filipinos are like, "That's not my experience." That drives Asian Americans crazy, right? I mean, you can see why because that's your chance. That's your one chance to be represented. You're not represented, right? So, given that, should Cambodian, Laotian, and Hmong Americans who struggle to graduate from high school? give up their privilege. What does that mean? What privilege do they have? So that's, that's the first question. Uh, along with that, the idea of media portrayal and misrepresentation. So uh, I, I brought some slides because I like slides. Um, can, we, can we put up the first slide? Ah, here you go. All right, so this is what Asian American population looks like, right? Now you can see um, I'm Korean American, and uh, there are a lot of Korean Americans here because we're at Fuller and we're at seminary. But we're actually only, we're less than Vietnamese Americans. And when I tell Korean Americans that, they're shocked. They're like, what? <laughs> Korean people, less than Vietnamese Americans, right? Do we hear about Indian Americans or Filipino Americans? 18% Filipino Americans. Now let's go to the next slide. Okay. So if you take a picture of Christians, then well, Korean Americans, there we go, right? Now this is all Christians, right? So it includes uh, Catholics as well. So Filipino Americans represented, right? So brown Americans represented, Asian Americans represented over there, right? But see, we don't live in that world because we live in often Protestant, evangelical Asian American world, right? So let's put that up. 34%. My brothers and sisters, now this is not talking about seminarians. We're talking about just broadly Asian Americans, right? You think about churches and seminarians, and it might be possible that you don't even see Filipinos or Indian Americans. You only see Korean Americans and Chinese Americans. So we have to think about the context in which our discourse about race 
And even this conference is going around, right? Do we see Asian America? Or do we see a very narrow sliver of Asian American evangelical, highly educated people, right? You have to think about these things. Otherwise, what are we talking about? I always ask the question, what are we talking about? What do you mean by Asian American? Are we seeing the right picture, right? Because if that's represented, and you can talk about representation of Asian Americans and the fact that privilege we have, well, I'm not sure if the Filipinos agree. Or I'm not sure if the 17% or Hmong Americans actually see. Now, this, this knowledge for me came at, uh, came to me uh, through a long process of being very stupid <laughs> and just getting that hammering through my head like, wait a minute, what I just said, it doesn't apply to me. So I realized, uh, let me get back to you because I don't know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> and as you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a professional Asian American at Fuller and that's a very difficult thing to do <laughs> because because Asia, Asia is a big place and Asian Americans are wide categories. So I had to sit there and like a couple of years ago, we had, a, we had among American students. And seriously, I, I spent all summer. I was like, that student's coming and I don't know anything about Hmong Americans. I don't know the refugee experience. I took a whole class on, on trauma because I was like, I'm, I don't know anything about that. Right? I had to study shamanism because Hmong shamanism is something just unique to them. They don't have history of Confucianism, Buddhism, nothing. It's their shamanism. Right? They're not kind of Chinese. They're not kind of Korean. If I don't see them, I don't see them at all. Well, in the context of theological education, who are the Asian Americans? Is it predominantly East Asian Americans talking about ourselves? Uh, if we are, then we're ignoring a lot of Asian Americans. Right? Now, that's the first point. So uh, I worry... Um, if we're talking about Asian Christianity and that becomes Asian American Christianity, what about brown Asian Americans? And like I said, I learned this in a very painful way where I get corrected on a regular basis and I think, oh, you know what? I ignored you. And I am the, I am the only Asian American sometimes in a meeting and I have to speak for you, but I forgot. Wow. So I worry. Um, the second point is this, the problem of Asian American political quietism. Um, I, 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 it resonates with me, the idea of giving up privilege. Um, and I think what that John, uh, Dr. Tran talk, uh, mentioned really, uh, it, it resonates for so many Asian Americans who are educated. Um, but um, I look at the problem of Asian American political quietism, and I say, why set aside our privilege? Why not fight for justice? There are more than 150 Asian American organizations who supported and fought this other group. And among them, organizations like Asian Americans Advancing Justice and so many other civil rights groups, Asian American civil rights groups, they exist, by the way, and they have a long history. They fought these people who, who were basically, you know, trying to do away with affirmative action. Now, on, on, on that list, were there Asian American Christians? What are we doing? I say, why not fight? Why not actively do something? Because Asian Americans are, well, the, the perception is that we're so passive. And there's a whole another world of Asian Americans actually doing something about these things. Why not join them? Right? There's already such a culture of Asian American Christianity that's connected to evangelicalism, that's Gnostic, disembodied in our ways of thinking about uh, discipleship and kingdom and Christian life and mission. Uh, I worry if this language of giving up feeds, feeds the political quietism that's there in Asian American context. That uh, as Asian American Christians, we uh, of course, obviously we do not put our hope on political structures, but as we're called to be in the, in the world, do we not find ways to advance justice and kingdom, even through political means as well? So that's my two comments connected to the idea of Asian Americans giving up our space at Harvard. As one more comment about history and the past. There's a, there's a serious disconnect between Asian American Christians and Asian American studies. 
So, uh, yes, there are those advocating various versions of uh, post-racialism, forgetting history, but, and that's crucial. But I think what I worry about is Asian American Christians and also other Christians and also other people altogether because of our black and white binary, forgetting about Asian American activism, Asian American history, right? The fact that Asian Americans, there's a long history of Asian Americans fighting justice, yeah. right? Um, is it how we think about race and how we discuss these things, does it render our history, our experience, and our struggles invisible? Is that what's happening? Uh, along with our complicity, there's actually been a long struggle and activism as well, right? People who fought, people who fought um, Chinese Exclusion Act, right? Uh, people who fought Japanese American incarceration, people who protested Vincent Chan's uh, murder, right? People who protested uh, Private Dan Chan's suicide after being after being uh, harassed and, and, and beaten by his fellow soldiers. Um, When you remember all these Asian American activists, when they remembered Asian American history of struggle, they understood what it meant to be people of color. And they, uh, in turn, into solidarity with other people of color, right? Uh, activist and writer Scott uh, Nagagawa talks about dismantling racism and how whiteness is the lever but anti-blackness is the fulcrum. So even as an Asian American activist, he fights anti-blackness. Now, how does that awareness come about? It's awareness of understanding that you are racialized, understanding that we live in a racialized world, the fact that if you ask a lot of Asian Americans, if you ask them, are you a person of color? A lot of them will say, what? Person of color, I, I don't even know what that means. Does that mean I'm brown? I mean, I'm, I'm not black. Now, and I, you know, in my class, I have to teach them, let me tell you why you are a person of color <laughs> and why that's important. Because if you get this, you will stop being, becoming complicit. What about that history, the Asian American history? Many Asian American Christians are disconnected to Asian American studies. Because a lot of Asian Americans came in the 80s and 90s, and this one Asian American evangelicals developed, and, and, and that's, that was kind of a low point of Asian American movement. And also because of our theme of theological anthropology and the idea of Christ's body being abstract humanity, not really a Jewish humanity, right? But we look at that and we say, well, I mean, I tell Asian American students, when you resurrect, you will resurrect in your Asian body. And they say, what? I will not be white, no, you will not be white. <laughs> Why? Because whiteness is not generic humanity. There is no such thing as generic humanity. Jesus is Jewish right now. Because you know why? There is no such thing as generic humanity. If you're a generically human, you're not human. You're a Greek category. I gotta end, so I wanna end with this. You know, stereotypical Asian, very quiet, right? So, uh, uh, one story. So, this person said, uh, he's Chinese American, said, you know, at UT Austin, the biggest campus group, a student group at UT Austin, is the Asian American, Asian American University. She would not have some kind of a com you know, contribution to this conflict. Uh, racial conflict. And I said, yes, if you know who you are. Otherwise, you are a danger to yourself. <laughs> Think about a white person and be like, I can help. I'm like, no, you can't. If you don't know who you are, yes. you're a danger to yourself and everybody else. Know yourself. Yes. Asian Americans, do we know ourselves? It's hard to know because even in conversations like this, sometimes we miss ourselves. And then what do you do? You know how many people I've talked to who are supposedly progressive Asian American Christians who say, you know, they bag on Asian American Christians and say, my church was backwards, so I got mentored by African Americans. I was like, hey, you know what? That's good. 
But you know your church, Asian American church, is not all Asian Americans. You know there's a whole field of Asian American activists you know nothing of. Yeah. So when you back on Asian Americans, you, yeah. you do injustice to yourself and everybody else. Get educated. Yeah. I'll end here. Thank you.